measured the head and then afterwards we'll plot it on the chart and see how it compares. Do you know what sex the baby is, Julia? Well, you told it's a girl. Right. Julia may never be able to keep the baby she is expecting. She is blind, deaf and without a partner. Despite this, she is determined to bring up her baby on her own. Look absolutely fine. The baby's growing beautifully. <laughs> Social workers will probably want to get involved, but I have already tried to make it clear that I just want support and maybe people um, I can go to for advice, not interference. And so I don't take kindly to interference. Can you feel that? Yes, I can. Great. Really. Um, so, we have a look in the shine stores. In the shine stores? Oh, yeah. my. Mm -hmm. Oops. Ah. Uh. I've got some nice dresses, I think. But are they affordable prices? <laughs> he knows. <laughs> I doubt no. it. I'm Lisa and I work at the National Deaf Blind League. I come around Tuesdays to help her with her shopping. She's one of my close friends. <laughs> Julia's a very stubborn person, but she's also a lot of fun. We have a great laugh. I'm thinking like that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> it's a three-way carrier. Oh, uh, um. Julia's five months pregnant already, and I don't think she realises how much help she is going to need and how much work is involved in having a baby. I think because she is stubborn, that the help she will get, she'll resent. Oh, good morning. I just want to make some arrangements about... The Social the services team have team become increasingly involved Julia, because Julia is to be a single mother. The baby's father, a married man, denies responsibility for the child. Now, can I post those to you and you do them for me? Lovely, thanks ever so much. Many thanks. Bye. I've got some very difficult issues to face with Julia this afternoon. We've had the doctor saying that he's got grave concern about her. We've also got um, two of the charge nurses at the hospital saying they're thinking Julia might be having second thoughts. Hi. Hi. Jill. Hi. Okay. So at the end of the day, she might say to me, mm. on your bike, I don't want to talk to you anymore because I'm raising issues that she doesn't really want to be thinking too closely about. What? Ah, now, that's what I wanted to check. I never said anything such thing. That's why I want to find out how you really right. do feel. Do no, I have absolutely, I have not had second thoughts on my at all whatsoever. Good. Sure, I'm going to need some kind of support, mm. and I will accept it. I'm not pushing it away. Good. That will. Make... I just don't like it. Just don't like it that all these these so-called experts just are implying that I can't manage. You They'll look silly at the end of the day, because I shall prove that I can. I think you will be able to if you will work with the people mm. who would really like to help you. I spoke to the practice manager in South Team. He wants me to raise the issue with you that in the early stages, 
you're going to need to either live with someone who can help or someone to live with you so that we can be quite sure baby's kept safe and you can manage it all. Well, who's going to live with me? And who am I going to live with? <laughs> Did you ask him that? Yes. <laughs> well, precisely. It's got to be someone you can get on well with and someone who is very good about knowing how babies grow up and their natural development. Well, I've no idea who that's going to be. So I don't want some bossy boots living in here telling me <laughs> what to do. <laughs> that would make two of and you. And I don't really want that. Hmm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, I'm not too keen on people hanging around all the time because I'd get sick to death of them. I'm sure you would. The other thing I want to talk to you about is about how you would feel if in a few months' time you find that the baby is too much for you. Do you think that at some point in the future you might have to consider letting the baby go? Christ, what thing to say? It's it hasn't happened yet, so no. I don't know. It might sound melodramatic, but it's an, an absolute fact. The baby's the only thing that's really kept me alive this year, kept me going. After things went so dramatically wrong at the beginning of the year. Yeah. Yes. So I would be devastated. It's the only thing that's really kept me going. The only thing I've got left yeah. to call my own, really. Yeah. I'm sorry I upset you, but I'd rather we talk now than I would get into a bad situation later. <laughs> It was really hard because it's so difficult to be spontaneous when I'm having to work through somebody else's hand all the time. I just wanted to give her a hug when she was so upset, but you can't do that. It's a case of standing back and saying, it's all got to come through Lisa. But I think she's going to work with us now, which is the main thing. People always say that being deafblind things would be very difficult or impossible. I've always enjoyed trying to prove people wrong. Julia has been blind since the age of four and deaf since she was 20. Yet despite her disabilities, she has lived alone for the past 10 years. When I found out I was pregnant, I was over the moon as it was what I wanted. But it, I did not deliberately set out to get pregnant. No way. There have been few men in my life, but I've never really cared about anyone till the last one. I think for the first time in my life, I was treated like a woman. It would really mean a lot to me if he would accept the baby, and I most certainly wish he was still in contact. But after all, it's his daughter as much as mine. It would be nice to have a partner sometimes. I am planning to see an old school friend who I haven't actually visited before. 
It's the first time I have actually been to visit Mel at her home. She had her first baby last October. It might sound silly, but I was really upset when Mel wrote to say she was pregnant, mainly because I wished it was me and was really jealous of her, thinking that I would probably never had one. And she's hearing blind and married to a blind man. They seem to manage fine. I think having this baby probably would be the biggest challenge of my life as it will be a person dependent on me for the next 18 years. So I don't think it will be an awful lot different the first year anyway as looking after a dog. After all, neither can tell you how they're feeling. You have to know by instinct. I got a digger from an animal refuge. I think he's the nicest natured dog I've had so far. And everybody who has met him reckon he's going to be fine with a baby. The first concern often has been, is the baby going to be all right? Now that is a very real issue and I mean most people would need reassuring that that baby is going to be safe. I mean I need reassuring that that baby is going to be safe. Um, not only just as a tiny baby when it's more easy to control what the child does but as it begins to grow and toddle around and move. You know how aware is a, a woman who is deaf and blind going to be of all the dangers in the house without a lot of support being put in. And that's going to be another difficult one for her because she wants to be independent. We don't want her to have to prove anything. So I would move away from that feeling of, I need to prove I'm all right. I'm Julia, I can do it, into, I've got a lot of fears and concerns about my baby, the same as any other mum would have. And that's a very different sort of thing for Julia to be thinking about not being the achiever, but of being the um, normal adult. And that's hard. The birth is now only a few days away, and social services are moving Julia to a bigger house. One of the things we've managed to do recently is to uh, get the three-bedroom house sorted out so that uh, Julia can move now and the carers can go in. All her equipment, the braille equipment and all her mechanical gadgets need one room. She needs her own bedroom with the baby and the carers need another bedroom. So we need a three-bedroom house and we've got it. Once she's in, she can have one carer on a fortnight basis and then another on another fortnight on a rolling programme till she no longer needs them, however long that might be. This is a nice new place. Uh, by the calendar, there is now only seven days to go. Yeah, I'm certainly looking forward to, be, to being a mum and I'm certainly looking forward to getting my figure back. Oh, my little foot up will be in front.
10 days later and Julia is eight hours into labor. She has insisted that it should be as natural a birth as possible. just going to go over the signals for the nurses yeah benefits yeah okay what are you going to do yeah push right mm hmm let's stop front yeah on that is that your leg yeah. So we should be able to react quite quickly as soon as you let Julia know what she should be doing. Right. Okay. Oh. okay. No, because we could see the head, we, we thought we'd be all right. Tell Julia, baby's been in a little bit of distress now because it's past emotion and the water has turned green around the baby. Oh. So we're waiting for the doctor to come now. The pediatrician will be at the delivery and her baby will go straight to him and as soon as possible will come to her. Okay. Yeah. Right. That's a normal procedure for any forceps delivery. Mm -hmm. The pediatrician will come. Hi. What's happening? Hello there, my name is Mr. Rife, I'm the registrar on call. My, my name is Mr. Rife, I'm the registrar. And I just come to, you know, deliver baby. Because he's going to be tired. 
We're going to numb her tail end. Oh. Can you just tell her to put a bottle on the bed? Yeah. Bottom on the bed and lie straight. That's the way we're going to get her delivered. Can I? 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 Tell her to put her back in the bed because we need to. We can't deliver her with her, you know. Oh, can you bend your legs in? Can you bend your legs in there? Bend your legs in. No, this legs. Can you bend it? Ow! Tell her to bend Ow! You're hurting me! It's now three days since the birth, and Julia prepares to return home with her daughter, Ayla. Mm. Another fun. Absolute fun. Mm. Mm. You are in luck, not dirty. She made a mystery around her.
Hiya. Home Hi. again. <laughs> it's been a good journey. Baby's been absolutely sound. Mm -hmm. well, she thinks she is exhausted. She'll be glad to get back to normality. Got some more. Yes. Mm -hmm. My official job title is, I suppose, care assistant, but obviously in this case I wouldn't think of it as that. Um, a supporter, I suppose. I don't really know that well. We've only met three times now, um, and I'm just learning the sign language myself, so it's just getting to know each other. I have pulled and help at the moment, but I'm not too sure how long I will need it. So I feel fairly confident that I'm going to manage better than everybody anticipated, including myself. <laughs> Anna has been described to me as having dark hair and blue eyes, and that she's also very pretty. So I've never actually seen myself, of course, but I don't know what she feels like. Like I know when Anna just gets very cross, just through touching her body. I don't know how long I am going to be living with Julia. I don't think anybody knows how long she will need full-time care, seeing as this situation hasn't, as far as we know, occurred before. It's just unknown ground. It's been hard work, but I have really <laughs> enjoyed it actually. Julia and I are getting on, on brilliantly, and she's coping ever so well. When I first moved in, I did keep a very close eye on Julia, but I've seen that she is quite capable. People come in here for the first time and look absolutely horrified at, at Julia walking around everywhere, um, even just carrying Ayla. But she's always overcautious, but it, everything's safe. So um, I don't believe that I have to be on top of her all the time. first moved in, we came to the agreement um, that I would not interfere 
and I would be here when she wanted me. Um, I've said that if I hear Ella crying, unless it's for a, a long amount of time, I will not interfere and I'll just let her get on with it like I would any mother. resentful at the idea of having somebody to share my home. But Anna is a very easy person to get on with. And so um, I felt less resentful. I've had bad experience with social services in the past. They've betrayed my trust more than once. I don't like the thought that they're going to be jackbooting around in my life for, um, for a while yet. I've been brought in as a social worker to try to make sure that she's going to get what she needs. I'm feeling quite frustrated with Julia because she's saying that's unfair. Mm. I think what she, what she wanted was that we would just leave her alone from the very beginning and just saw what happened and that she would be the person who would say when she needed help. Just not the, answer, not the very tips of the phone, just because it hurts. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Actually, I cannot trust her to know for certain when she needs help and when there's something wrong. I mean, that's one of the things that I can't get through to her. Listen, I'm trying to make you understand me just as much as you are trying to make me understand you. That's what I am trying to do. That's all. You're putting Ella more at risk if I don't have more time to myself. In just a couple of hours. I'm, more, I'm under pressure, don't forget, when I've got to put up with someone 24 hours a day, seven days a week. For me, you can't come first. I said it over and over again. I'm not saying I do need to come first, I put her first. Even the dog doesn't come first anymore. Good. Though I make sure he comes a good close second. Good. I come third. <laughs> and so it me. We're doing whatever we can at the moment to keep them together but I need I need I need something back from Julia I need I suppose I'm looking for a change of attitude um, maybe that'll come you know it's very early it's very difficult for her I know that I know that she's someone who's been very independent I know she is finding it very difficult to have people sort of breathing down her neck all the time but I'm trying to give her as much space as I can There is a slight risk that the baby will inherit my hearing and sight problem. And I was fully aware of all the way along that Taylor might develop it later on. But so far, I have a certain hearing and no more. I think it was three times a day for the drops, wasn't it? Um, no, I think it was once in the morning and then in the evening, yeah, just to increase it. Yeah. What does it say on the bottle? Oh, it said twice. Twice, oh, that's all right then. 
but I do clean them as well. Yes, that's fine. The cleaning is, is very important. Okay, let's let's undress her and weigh her. I've always more or less accepted my blindness, so it's my deafness I've always really bitterly resented. There are different forms of this condition, and if she does develop it, it doesn't necessarily mean she will be deaf. Chances are she will only just be blind. But don't you think that people will think that your attitude is very selfish? Me? Hell, she wasn't blind, was she? I could have have aborted her with that being self that's been selfish. What do you suggest I do? Have her shot? No, but do you not feel Well then, don't ask stupid questions. At the moment, we are in a bit of a mess concerning weekend stuff. One girl backed out, so we had an emergency girl in, and then she didn't really get on with Julia that much. It's got to get sorted out, because I do need my time off. A few days later, social services call a meeting to try and sort out the problems of weekend care. If my relationship with my parents was better, that would solve the problem. I don't go home every weekend. I just dare not go home at <coughs> weekends because my mum will take over. Will you, will, you, will you tell Julia from me that I can see she's crying? Can she tell, can, is she able to tell us what's going on in her mind that's brought the tears? Can I just sort of butt in? Um, my job is, and I'm not getting at anyone here, is being made a lot harder from the fact that people are coming in without sometimes thinking what they're saying first and I get it for about three or four hours this afterwards. When I tell Julie the phone's ringing or the doorbell's ringing, she panics straight away. And I panic because I think, what have I got ahead of me here? So, you know, that is one, as far as I can see, big step that we've got to get round here because I can't handle that and I know Julia can't handle that. And it, it shouldn't be, as far as I'm concerned, part of my job calming her down every day. Her view on authority as such isn't a very high one. And I think if people started, if people came round just to say hi sometimes would help a lot without coming round to tell her what to do and what she shouldn't be doing. Well, I suppose since we're the two people in authority <laughs> here, here, we need what, to what I feel is I'm not, I must say that I'm not aware that I've ever been round and told Julia that she was, or you, that, that you are doing things wrong. I, I haven't had anything to criticise, but to move forwards with you, I need to talk about what problems there might be. And it would also help if you if you felt able to be honest about how you're feeling. It's one week after the meeting and the care situation for Julia and Ayla has taken an unexpected turn. 
today I'm, I'm leaving Julia's. I think the professional relationship between us both is pretty much going. We're more sort of best friends now, really. So I'm leaving and getting on for my sake, obviously, as well. I mean, we've been like a married couple, I suppose, over the last <laughs> few weeks, you know. Well, more <laughs> we've been with each other more than a married couple would be. We've been with each other 24 hours a day, seven days a week, or five days a week. So, um... I think it is time now to, to have the break. Hi. Hello. <laughs> but at the same time, I don't want to throw anybody in. I want to sort of know that it's going to be somebody that she's going to get on with. Everything's dumped at the moment. Yeah. Just setting in and things. Right. You can hear probably Julie's in the living room. Yeah. I've just wrote a few things down, basically, to make your life a yeah, bit easier. Fine, um, Julia is not very, very happy at the moment at all. Um, That's understandable. Yeah, isn't it? basically, she's um, obviously mixed up quite. Yeah, you know, she, she just doesn't want somebody else yeah. new. She's been sort of had so many different people yeah. over the last few weeks. But Julia's got a very, very strong character. Mm -hmm. um, you'll find that out yeah. quite quickly. Mm -hmm. Don't tell her anything as such. Um, ask. <laughs> yeah, I mean, phrases on signing. Um, I know they take a bit longer than sort of would you mind if I mm. rather than yeah. I'm going to mm. um, but, but yeah, do it's it worth, it's <laughs> yeah. worth with, with the otherwise elbow, yeah. you know I mean it's yeah. her house you've yeah. got to accept that yeah. um, another thing I don't know what you've your nails these I mean some of these may feel, seem so stupid but keep also, them really really short yeah, on your right hand trim mine down you know I I take obviously Julie's hands I've got people on them all the time yeah. um, and they are very, very sensitive yes. and you just have to catch it or something yeah. and it, it does hurt. Mm -hmm. um, say when the vowels are on on the fingers, yes. um, do them on the top, so that's E, yeah. rather than at the end, yeah, don't yeah. do them at the end because yeah. that sort of yeah. might catch her. And I, I think basically that, that's most of it. I think with Julia, it would take time, but I, I'm quite a adaptable person and I can understand her reasons of why she's going to resent me for a while. And it's got too friendly and, and the work isn't meant to be like that. You know, it would be quite alright. I feel quite happy. Again, we've got a carer coming in who's finding it a major culture shock to be living with a person who's deaf and blind. I thought initially we were going to lose her within the first 48 hours, but she might stick a bit longer. 24 hour care has worked for the time we've had it in, but I don't think long term it's the solution. It's it's a strain not only on Julia but on me. The caseload is heavy. There are a lot of pressures just on keeping things rolling. I mean, I wake up every morning thinking, what's today going to bring for her? Today. Um, yes, I'm a bit down, I'll be honest with you. I haven't had a very good weekend. 
Okay, Julia and I have, um, well, let's put it this way, we didn't sort of hit off too well. So I'm trying to make up with things, that's lovely. Um, I feel that she feels that I'm a threat to her, that um, I'm here as a spy, you know, and um, she's just mentally, she's very draining and she puts this barrier up against me, you know, and likes to say, I don't want you nowhere near me, don't you dare touch my baby, don't you dare move, mm. and don't touch anything, and I felt so isolated. Yes. She started crying, and I thought, oh, she said, leave me alone. She said, what are you doing? I don't want you here. I don't want you here yes. at all, which I can understand. Yes. So I just yeah. thought, there's no way she wants me to talk yes. to her. So I just left, and I went up to my room, you know, yes. and that's when I got upset, but I didn't let her know. But I'll be honest with this, I think I've taken on a bit more than I can cope with, yes. you know, it's, it's a lot, so it's something different that I've yes. never done before. But what I would say about it is it's the basis of the assessment we've got to yes, get done yes, on her. Yes, so got to have yes, this. I realise this. But like I said, it's a waste of time you being here all the time because she doesn't, you know, the baby's perfectly safe. She does all her movements like sitting, she does everything yes. to time and night time is no problem. Ayla yeah. rarely wakes up, she, she's very contented, yes. you know. I mean, all power to her. I mean, I think she's doing brilliantly well and I think you've done well to have had on over a weekend mm. that's obviously incredibly stressful. Yes. I mean, when you think of all the things she's offering, she's got nice warm yeah. I don't want a new care, full stop. It's not her fault, I know. But now most people think I don't really need a care of full time. And I don't think so either. Actually, things have improved enormously since Anna left, and I don't think that's a coincidence. What we realised was that the problem between Julia and my department through me was that Julia resented having this intrusive 24-hour-a-day live-in carer. It wasn't so bad when it was Anna, because Anna became a friend, but the only way she'd been able to cope with it was by making Anna a friend. I mean, they both, that's how they both cope with it. That had to change. When we had a good look at it, we realised that we'd reached a stage where we felt there was really a minimal risk involved in allowing Julia and uh, Ayla to have some space and time to themselves. And the reason we called the meeting today is that we feel that we ought to reduce that 24-hour day cover now. And what we're looking at is somebody coming in seven days a week for about eight hours. I've now had four people who have stayed with you, Julia, who have assured me that your care of Ayla isn't just competent but is extremely good. I suggested that we call the carer a housekeeper now. You like that idea, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Here we go again. This is a major step forward for Julia. She will be left to look after her baby completely alone each night. I did wonder. The housekeeper will leave at 7 p.m. Really and well not return mornings. until 11 the next morning. And if they stay till 7, they can prepare the evening meal and do the washing up afterwards. The law requires that we do everything that we can to enable a parent to keep a child. It's been made easier in Julia's case because we've been able to tap into the community care budget. There are cases where I've had to remove children from um, disadvantaged single mothers and I know that if we'd been able to put in the kind of resources that we put into Julia, that would never have happened. I could have tidied them over for the first five years of their children's lives and they would have stayed with their mothers and not been removed from them and ultimately placed for adoption. There isn't a logical answer to it other than that in the end it's a matter of resources. The money that's being used to pay for 
the care for Julia and Ayla comes from a different budget from the budget that we'd use for child protection. It comes from the community care budget and Julia can tap into that because of her disabilities. I'm still very much taking one day at a time at the moment, but the thing I'm really excited about is getting Ella on a pony for the first time and hope that she will share my love for riding. It's two weeks later, and the first day on duty for Dawn, the new housekeeper, I think she thinks that if she treats us all really badly that there won't be any carers will come in and, and do the job. She'll be on her own and that's what she really wants. But that won't happen. You know, if there isn't somebody here, I think the bad might be taken off her. If she doesn't accept the fact that there has to be somebody here, you know. I think I'll have to put her in her place maybe now and again and tell her off then again because, you know, once I get the language quicker, because I'm a bit slow with this at the minute, and once I get a bit quicker, I think I'd have to actually say to her, look, miss, you know, I'm not here for, I'm, I'm just here to, to help, and, you know, be better you got on with me than you fought against me all the time. And hopefully she maybe will trust me enough to leave the baby with me and not keep taking it with her all the time. Julie's really surprised me how wonderfully she's coping but there's some things that still worry me. Ayla's started to look around more, she's taken more of an interest in her environment around her but Julia doesn't, she tends to spend a lot of time in her cot where she should be having a look around it in the world. I feel sad for her, perhaps sad's the wrong word, but without a doubt she'll never have a normal relationship with a mum. I mean, Julia loves her to bits, but it's just never ever going to be an ordinary childhood. It's a thing that preys upon my mind sometimes as to how we will manage. I hope we can be good friends as well as mother and daughter. She will probably have a few more responsibilities than most young um, children, but I hope I won't lean on her too much and expect too much from her. I hope I sort of, you know, get on with her and stick it out and, you know, I'd love to watch the Bab grow up because she's a lovely wee thing. I just, you know, would like to be in here and see that. It would be nice. it's very difficult for most people to realise that to be totally blind and profoundly deaf is one of the most limiting experiences that a human being has to endure. Julia's a remarkable person in lots of ways. Sometimes I felt remarkably horrid, other times just remarkable in the way she does cope. Um, it hasn't been easy going. She is still a very independent person who wants to fight battles. 
I want to work with her long enough so that she realises that the fight is not necessary, that cooperation is a far better word to be using. Twitchy toes. Twitchy toes. Twitchy toes. Twitchy toes. Twitchy toes. Twitchy toes. That's a good girl. That's a good girl. I suspect that this is the easy bit, the bit that we've just gone through, Ayla's first three months, while she's still a tame, immobile, small baby. As soon as she becomes mobile, which might be by the time she's five months old, I think everything will change. I really don't know what the future holds. I hope everything goes well, but bringing up active, small babies and toddlers is a difficult job for sighted hearing mothers. I know it's a difficult job for blind mothers and I know it's a difficult job for deaf mothers, but for somebody who's got both those major sensory disabilities, I think it's a very, very tall order, and I don't know whether she can do it. I don't know whether she can do it, even with help from us.